Welcome back to The Fate of Drakenheim. This is the Dungeon Dudes Weekly Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition Actual Play Campaign. I'm Monty Martin, running our game as Dungeon Master. And I'm Jill Denitis, playing Broody Whitaker, the Shifter Elder tonight. And Joel Gorman, playing Wrath, the Azamar Warlock. And I'm Callie McLaughlin, playing Wilhelm von Kessel, the Human Swashbuckler Rogue. And we are joined for one final time by our good friend. I'm Jenny D, and I am playing Ava Blightward, the Human Abjuration Wizard. Thank you for joining us once again. And thank you, Ginny, for joining us once again. It has been an absolute joy to have you here. I'm sure we will see how things go as we conclude your time with us. Yeah, this is the episode where I kill them all. <laughs> Excellent. Sorry, what? What did she say? <laughs> Nothing. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> this wig gets on my ears. If you haven't followed that yet, we're the Dungeon Dudes. Kelly and I post new videos over on our YouTube channel where we cover everything D&D, &D, so be sure to check that out. And when you're over on YouTube, be sure to check out all the fantastic content produced by Ginny D as well. You can also join us on Tuesday evenings when we broadcast the campaign on Twitch. Check us out from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can also watch the video episodes of the show on YouTube or check us out as an audio-only podcast. And with that, let us return to Drakenheim. <laughs> Drakenheim is no more. The devastation which fell upon that accursed place left a kingdom in ruin. Now, horrors lurking in the haze grow ever more great and terrible. While simmering tensions between rival factions boil over into outright war, the power of monarchs, mages, and priests hangs in the balance. Six unlikely heroes join forces to confront the coming chaos. They shall decide once and for all the fate of Drakenheim. When last we left our heroes, Wilhelm, Rudy, Wrath and Ava had defeated the mutated brain of Dr. Everett Freed beneath the Von Fritz mines, escaping with those who they rescued, including Ava's sister, Heidi, into a demiplane conjured by the Academy Mage. Our heroes were able to recuperate in this demiplane for a rest so that Ava could then open an exit to the demiplane, allowing them to escape back to the mortal world. Where would you like to open your demiplane back up to? Um, I think I would do it in the Great Hall of Castle Sodden, which I'm very familiar with, and sure. we know I, that it's already been cleared. I almost imagine that the door opens as one of the regular doors of the Great Hall, and everyone just walks, walks out uh, to a very surprised group of Hooded Lantern soldiers who are already working on restoring the the halls. However, one amongst you is suffering quite greatly, for in the midst of the battle with Everett Freed's brain, Rudy's intellect was devoured by one of the small brain creations, the Beba brains created by Everett Freed. And thus, Rudy's in intelligence score is currently zero, um, meaning that she is perpetually stunned. We, Wrath, can you get her feet? Oh yes, and I've been feeding poor Rudy. Feeding her what? Food. Oh, good. And <laughs> as I feed Rudy, I say, Rudy, <laughs> Rudy, I will take care of you. Bruce will take care of you. Bruce is always looking out for you. <laughs> and I'm gonna use my Create thrall. <laughs> wait, wait. what does I... this entail? No, I Rudy mean, like. Is simply. Is there a process here that I'm me. witnessing? Because I might try to stop you. It's just an action. I was just feeding Rudy. Bruce and I take care of Rudy, and Rudy knows that. Rudy knows that I'm looking out for her. I don't think Rudy knows anything right now. 
<laughs> Literally zero. Rudy is effectively charmed and we can telepathically communicate on this plane of existence. Now we can talk anytime I want and you can talk to me. There's nothing, there's nothing. It's okay. It will come back. I just have to hear one way call. <laughs> so, oh, <I'm> good. <laughs> Bruce propaganda <laughs> coming into my mind. Constantly being, does Wilhelm <laughs> notice this happen? There is no somatic component. There is no verbal component. I simply touch an incapacitated creature. Is there any way that I can notice that this has happened? Or is that it, I'm, I, I'm asking the DM, or is this unnoticeable? Roll me a d20. Just, just no, just roll a d20. We got a seven. Ava, you can roll me a d20. Oh, I shall. That's a natural one. I'm distracted. <laughs> there, there, Rudy. Bruce will take care of you. Oh, oh. so kind. Oh. <laughs> Eat the soup! <laughs> now we can talk anywhere. We're telepathically bonded. What did you say? Rudy was just telling me how lovely the soup is. <laughs> the soup is drooling out. It's... And I'm trying to catch it. <laughs> uh, uh, don't waste it. Don't waste it. We need to find... You, you do notice that... that... Rudy has kind of been positioned like sitting cross-legged and Bruce sleeps in Rudy's lap this evening. We need to find Eldrick or, or River. Uh, yeah, we right. come into the, like we, we basically, as this soup feeding is happening, <laughs> we're frantically like the, the room I, I imagine is full of like soldiers and. Yes. Um, as you, you do so, re returning, of. It's just only a short while, while, while later before a very relieved Elias Drexel sees you. And he says, I thought the worst when there was a tremor that struck the mines. And I thought the worst when that had happened. But I'm glad that I had faith in my king. When the tremors were noticed, I ordered our troops to attack the mines head on. We were able to destroy the rest of Freed's creations that were on the surface. And there were a few amongst the mine staff that were, had still survived. But by the time we the battle had finished, these tremors began striking the mines and the passageways had collapsed and flooded and we couldn't go further to investigate. I. Almost everyone thought that you might have been slain, but it's good to, uh, good to know that you survived. I actually had Eldrick try to cast Sending to find you. And that's when, of course, because a Sending spell wouldn't be able to actually contact you in a demiplane. We have Ava to thank for all of our safety. Thank you, Ava. She went above and beyond to not only see to it that our goals were met, but that we were able to escape. Ava, thank you. Of course, it would have been foolish to eliminate one ruler and not leave another in their place. But there is one issue still, Elias. I believe there's probably several, but what is <laughs> your highest priority, Your Majesty? Rudy was, um, her brain was attacked and she's not well by she, the flame he snaps his fingers in front of her and like she, there's there's just no tracking there there at, at all there's no thoughts behind those eyes we need <laughs> we need help immediately <laughs> i'll send for, this is we have two powerful academy mages here. Why Why can't they do anything? Why can't they? This is beyond my purview. What do you mean it's beyond your purview? She needs to have her intelligence restored. That is not something that a wizard is capable of accomplishing. No wizard? Not even Eldrick? Are there any wizards that can... I, I don't know. You, you, you would know that... that 
a greater restoration and heal spells, the ones that fix the mind like this. In ver there are very rare practitioners that are capable of, of course, breaking the bounds of what is traditionally considered arcane versus divine magic. And of course, there are very powerful spells like Wish, but those are only known to a handful of individuals. Thus, it would require a powerful... The, the, the type of magic that would be required to fix Rudy uh, would be the purview of a powerful flame keeper of the Sacred Flame. Ava, does the flame keeper in town, are they, how skilled are they? They're, how skilled are they? <laughs> the high flame keeper Irma um, has been the flame keeper of Toddsfeld for nearly 40 years. So, and is as, as a wizened woman, um, certainly, um, and as a as high flame keepers generally are quite powerful in their in their divine capabilities as as mem as members of the priesthood of the sacred flame typically it is a merit based ranking so the more powerful flame keepers are usually given to the cathedrals and thus saint rosalind's cathedral staffed by a high flame keeper such abilities could be within her her purview um and Thus, it would be asking for Irma for Irma's favor specifically. We should speak to High Flame Keeper Irma. She might be able to do something. Heidi crosses her arms and says, "This woman, I know who she is." Ava. Rudy. Yes. So do I. She killed one of our brothers. She's responsible for what happened to Toddsfeld. I figure that she's paid this as a penance. She helped save me, but if it weren't for her, none of this would have happened in the first place. I don't think that that's a fair a fair equation. You weren't there. You didn't see how the water, the pollution, what it did to our father, what it did to our family. And this king's father, too, he was the one that ordered it. Well, I would consider carefully what stance you wish to take here as one of uh, the only living von Fritzes who is not already in a position of noble title. If you wish to reject Wilhelm's authority, that is certainly your right. But I'm not sure what will happen. Give me an intimidation check. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll give you advantage on the roll. All right. Oh, God. Intimidation. I feel like Ava was definitely like, what do you mean? I've already drawn the logical conclusions. <laughs> I vouched for you already. Possibly differ. Also, I'm older than you, so you do what I tell you. <laughs> uh, okay, this was just advantage, right? Yeah. That's great. Um, intimidation. Thirteen! And now you think you can just come back in and boss the whole family around? I'm bossing no one around. You can make whatever choice you choose. I'm simply making sure you're aware of the consequences. And what... What are those consequences? Well, with your father dead, Toddsfeld is going to need a new ruler, and we are deeply considering who would be the best candidate to aid us in rebuilding the dam and fixing Toddsfeld and fixing the mistakes of our past, the mistakes of my father and the commands that he gave and the orders he gave. In that path, we would want a ruler who agrees with those decisions and sees to it that we try to form some sort of unity in this continent. And if you cannot agree to that, then we'll look to somebody else. I suggested to Wilhelm that you might be a useful resource for rebuilding here, specifically because I believed you of all people would not want to be held, would not want anyone held responsible for the sins of their father. Wilhelm, you can give me a persuasion check with advantage because of the support from Ava. Uh, that's going to be a 33. Oh my, okay. <laughs> Whoa! She's a little taken aback at that, 
and says, maybe the time for it's best that we put all this bad blood behind us. Heidi, rule number 84, do not condemn a person for the sins of their ancestors. Both you and I lived in the shadows of fathers who made mistakes. You and I, as the children of those rulers, have a chance to do better. And I think together, we can pave a new way forward for Toddsfeld and for Westmark. I never thought that I was going to be in charge of things here. I'm going to need a lot of help. You'll get the help that you need, and Ava, a court mage will be needed in Toddsfeld if... Yeah, what happened to our court mage? She, did she get turned into a construct or... Um, Master, sorry, Master, Noodles. Master Noodles was sent away by right. by by the Duke as, as, as well over their disagreements, um, and so this was several months ago. So there is no court mage in place currently. Perhaps you could nominate help. yourself. Perhaps you could help guide your sister, and together the two of you could help rebuild Tottsville. If that is her wish, then certainly. I would commit my services. Okay. We... You're not going to be able to expect very much from Toddsfeld until the city is rebuilt. We will be supplying ample funding to Toddsfeld in order to rebuild the dam as soon as possible and help with the restructuring of all of the buildings that were lost and getting the mines open and functional again. Elbrick chimes in and says, Your Majesty, you understand that reconstruction in Toddsfeld is a project that will take years. Rebuilding the, the dam, the expense, the engineering of that, we, in the midst of everything else, I know that we've won a great boon for the treasury recently, but it will be no small expense to rebuild here. We will spare no expense. No, we've, we have found enough funding that this should be, I, I won't let the mistakes of my father condemn this city to ruin for eternity. It's it's seen enough damage. And hmm. Toddsfeld is a staple of Westmar. It is one of the most prominent trading capitals for our continent, and it has been in shambles for years. It's not good for Westmar, hmm. and it's not good for the people of Toddsfeld. The people here have suffered more than anyone else on the continent. I would gladly put forward the funding to make sure that we are taking the steps necessary to improve Toddsfeld and in turn all of Westmar. Seems like we've the past years have ruined more than one city in Westmar and I agree it is a time for rebuilding but we should see to Rudy. Do we have a wagon or something that we can bring into town? Wheelbarrow. I'll, I'll wheelbarrow her in if, if, if I need I to. I can cast telekinesis and just bring her along, like... Do we have that, uh, what's the tensor's floating disc? Does anyone have that? Where you can like, just like float her along? Unseen servant dragging you? <laughs> <laughs> Which one of those options is viable? Either is uh, either or are totally viable. All right, we How plop her on it? a tensor's floating disc. Oh, I don't have that. Eldrick. Po polymorph me into a. Yeah, I, I polymorph you into a wolf. It's very easy to get a, 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 a wagon or something to to bring her along with. Let's follow. Well. Well yes, it is. <laughs> All right, wolf or wagon? Wolf. Okay. Polymorph into a wolf. Okay. <laughs> This is the part, of the, the the part where where um, even even as a wolf, I I almost imagine that 
normally one would retain a part of their personality, even transformed, but polymorphing Rudy into a wolf, basically, there's no Rudy to map onto. It's She's all like wolf. wolf. Yeah. He runs off. Oh, damn. <laughs> I can't <laughs> tell <laughs> yeah. lift up the wolf. <laughs> and now we're carrying a very angry wolf to the... Right. Mm -hmm. I call the rest of my wolves. Oh! We should have used the wagon. We should have used the bunny. We should have used something else. Okay, let's get her to the flame keeper. Still laughing matter. Yeah, this is super serious. As um, Rickard Steelfang and several of the Octonwald regulars come up to Rudy as you cart her off, and Rickard says, "Now that's my, a nightmare of mine. It's one thing to be." The risk of being struck down in battle, but uh, lose your mind. Uh, that's as one is born a curse. That's not a curse I'd wish on an enemy of mine. Give him a clean death instead. You gonna patch her up? We're gonna we're gonna see to it that she's okay, and it's just another sign of Everfried's terror and his inability to fight with any honor. I'm glad that he's gone. All right, then. Good on you, your majesty. And Steel Fang and the Irregulars, uh, with with concerned expressions in, in their faces, um, head back to their duties. Concerned uh, for Rudy? Yeah. 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 You know, there's, uh, um, you know, there are many amongst them who were wounded in, in, in these battles, and... Um, several of them, um, though their wounds being tended to by, by one another, this is another, this is something else. Yeah. You know? So, you head into Toddsfeld, stepping through the devastation that the cannons have wrought through the city. All throughout, uh, there are patrols of several hooded lanterns and other soldiers for the contamination of the weaponry did cause monsters to appear throughout the city. And as you w make your way through the boardwalks and the tattered streets of Toddsfeld towards the St. Rosalind's Cathedral, you can see that the cathedral is built up on a, a raised area of town and surrounded by sandbags to stop the flooding from coming coming into it. And there is a mob of people outside, common folk, many injured, wounded, and they are crying out for the help of the flame keepers. And there are acolytes coming out from the cathedral into the throng, seeing the people that, that are that are here and triaging the wounds that they are suffering and co coming along and bringing and finding who is most wounded and who they can help and and um e even even as they do one common folk says please please you've you've got to help my my family and one of the acolytes says we only have so many spells Are, are people here because they are contaminated or because they are physically wounded? Like both. Can I, can I join the the acolytes outside and just cast uh, what's the decontaminating spell? Purge contamination. Purge. I I just want to treat as many people as I can with purge contamination and just mm. help them while you guys go. So. I, I, well, ideally, what I would like is to offer my help in such a way that they feel it's okay to let Rudy in. Okay. Versus these other people that also need help. As you approach many of the people who are showing the signs of contamination, there's one thing that you know. The purge contamination spell has an expensive material component. Mm -hmm. It is a hundred gold pieces per casting of the spell. Okay, I'm gonna start pulling patches off my robe. You, you have that gold you found earlier. Yeah, I found some gold. Yeah, like that. And so I would assume that you would, as an expert in this, you would know the materials that you need, need, need to, to assemble. And so as, as you approach, the, the crowd sees Wilhelm appro uh, 
approaching, and they go, "Oh, it's King Willy coming!" And and, and one person cries out, "Oh, it looks like the king needs healing. Too good, coming in and taking it away from all all of us common folk." And um, several of the flame keepers and their acolytes, they they look up with trepidation as your train approaches. I turn to the crowd. A lot of soldiers lost their lives in the past day to free Toddsfeld. A lot of us are only hurt because you showed up with your soldiers! The tyranny of Duke Von Fritz is over and we will be putting an end to the contaminated flooding in Toddsfeld and rebuilding the dam and fixing the mistakes of the past here. Ava, the daughter of Duke Von Fritz, will be here to aid those as best she can. One of our brave soldiers who went into the mines to stop Everett Freed from continuing to experiment on the people of this town is in dire need of the services of the Acolytes. With her back, we will be able to better aid the people of Toddsfeld. Give me a persuasion check. Uh, 26. Several of the people seem quelled by that, but one rabble rouser in the crowd says, Oi! That's one of them irregulars! She... You're, you're gonna heal someone who's who, who you ordered to blow up that dam in the first place! You monster! I'm gonna walk up to him and I place my hand on his shoulder and I go, it is not one of the irregulars. You need to go home now. And I cast a gesture. <laughs> <laughs> and I try to do it just sort of like, it, like I'm the security. Like I just walk over and go, it is time to, it's time to go home. It's time, it's time for you to leave. Um, so the, the suggestion is not a subtle spell. Uh, um, oh, no. and, and so you cast the spell on the on the man who immediately shuts up and goes home, um, and and one of the 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 uh, uh, the acolyte says, "You academy mages, you're mind controlling these people who are only here for help." Come here. Right, <laughs> <laughs> right. No one will speak ill of the kid. Thank, thank you, Ron. You know, I like step in between them, and I know I'm also an Academy page. <laughs> Not great. I want to step in between the Acolyte and Wrath and say, please accept our sincerest apologies. We are coming out of several days of, of continued battle. All that we want to do is help our companion regain her function so that the king and his party can continue on and do good work around here. Everyone makes mistakes. We just want to make sure that they can get on their way and back to doing good. <laughs> and then I want to look at Wrath. I want to make sure that Acolyte can see me cast just a very judgmental look at Wrath so that I... What? He had to go home. What level spell is cast judgmental Wrath? <laughs> <laughs> I, I have it as a cantrip. I can just do it at <laughs> well. Nice, nice, nice. <laughs> What? I simply told him to go home. He decided he wanted to go home. I thought, I, I mean, he went of his own volition, probably. I can also cast suggestion, and, uh... I just strongly <laughs> suggested that he stop being loud. I want to put my hand on Wrath's shoulder and say, I strongly suggest that you take a step back and yes. cast suggestion. Okay. <laughs> Make a wisdom saving throw. It's a suggestion of... Uh, I got a 25. Oh, you succeed! I don't want to. <laughs> but I will. And I and I and I'll I'll take I'll take my I'll take my step back. I do feel like I to need give, to, to align give. myself with the town because I'm the one that's gonna stay here. Okay. Well that was a scene. The the crowd the the gathered crowd um many other others seeing seeing the scene ju ju just say 
you hear more people just be begging it. Please help us. Just help us. I, as an act of good faith, as as I as I kind of move Rudy towards the acolytes, I approach the crowd as well, and I have. Do not mix up the vials of poison. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, this will kill you. I have three potions. You'll of never greater... feel pain again. I have three potions of greater healing that I'm going to just offer to the the people. And I have two. I'll throw those in two. People begin greedily taking them and run back to their families to help wounded loved ones that they couldn't bring. Back I am I am offering what I can. And all I ask in exchange is that you let us repair our friend who has been through several days of battle on behalf of Toddsville. One of the acolytes, a young woman named Tima, says, all right, come in and see the High Flame Keeper. We'll, we'll bring you in. I touch one of the very wounded people and I'm gonna cast well, not cast. I'm going to use my healing hands and restore 16 hit points. Oh! Trying to show. Okay. Sometimes I have a nice touch. Imagine if you reach out to someone and they're like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> no! Stop moving! I just want to heal you! As you. Get back here. <laughs> St. Rosalind's Cathedral is like all, cha like all holy buildings of the Sacred Flame. It is a large stone building with a great, uh, a great copper-roofed dome, um, and so the the holy buildings of the Sacred Flame are all generally circular in shape, because as you enter into the doors, there are stained glass windows and alcoves with statues bearing the images of the saints, including Saint Tarna, the founder of the faith, and. All, like all cathedrals, there's a mosaic floor, and the center of the room is always a great burning brazier. And because the the faithful of the sacred flame generally stand in concentric, concentric rings of the around the flame, and they speak prayers, often at sunrise and sunset, to remind themselves of the persistence of needing to keep the light through the dark. And as you come into the cathedral, the space feels more like a makeshift hospital than a holy place. For rows and rows and rows of um, imp improvised beds have been pushed out into, into the cathedral, many of which bear moaning and broken wounded Several others, there's a curtain that has been set up around a, a group of others, those who bear contaminated mutations uh, and require much more care and assistance. In an, another area of the cathedral, others have been placed together as a makeshift morgue awaiting cremation, which is the standard practice for faithful of the sacred flame. As you come in, the acolytes all look exhausted. The smell in here, the nor normally the, the incense that is burned in the, in the braziers, that is the only thing masking what would be the smell of sweat, desperation, and blood filling this place. The exhausted acolytes and flame keepers are running from patient to patient using what magic they have to help them, and it it is clear there's there's a certain look that a spellcaster has about them when they're out of spell slots, that kind of that drained feeling that you can s s s tell. I like to imagine that there's like a physical exertion associated with with casting a spell, and in and amongst them is a tiny woman who must be in her seventies. She wears the 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 golden robes of a high flame keeper she is barely five feet tall um and the and two acolytes are helping her go from patient to patient as she speaks the prayers of the sacred flame and offers what healing magic she can she can mu muster up um you can see the tiredness 
in this woman's face as she looks up to see your approaching group. Hi, Flame Keeper. We, like all of these others, have come to beg your aid. We have a serious case that we believe only you can help with. Oh. Another? Well, I think there's another cot over there. Lay them down and I'll see what I can do about getting to them in, in, in time. There's many that need help here. She needs a very specific type of help that no other healer or acolyte around here can provide. I would love to offer what services I can, purging the contamination of some of your wounded, if you can give her just a moment of your time. Oh, you'd like to help? Oh, she'd like to help! Come along then! And and, and, and immediately they... <laughs> um, lay, lay your friend da down. All... Am I a wolf? Uh, I, I, no, I, I, not anymore, because okay, you guys cast, uh, cast, uh, suggestion. <laughs> and the, the high flame keeper <laughs> says, It's okay. It's okay. Um, she, it's she, Bruce she, she looks over Rudy and says, Something's happened to her mind. What happened to her? We uncovered a, a series of experiments happening in the mines that were trying to transform people's minds to bend them to the will of a very evil man who we were able to defeat, but in defeating him, he got to our friend and one of his creations affected her mind and seems to have reduced it to nothing. Well, this will need a powerful spell. My lord, there are, there are many that need help today. Your friend, we can take care of her, but if I help her now, I will not be able to help. Uh, with the, the spell needed to help your friend now will mean the lives of at least 20 others that I could help today. Maybe we can offset with Ava and myself. Can we not reduce that number? Can you cast healing spells? Roll number 99. Whenever given a difficult choice, the option that helps the most people is the correct choice. I can help your friend, but there are others who they need the divine light of the sacred flame now and today, or they will not survive. How long could Rudy be in this state? Can can you tell us anything about her condition? I, I'm unfamiliar with it. Is, is, is this a, if we don't save Rudy now? Will this be permanent? Well, the, yeah. So effectively, with your intelligence drain to zero, you're stunned, which basically means that you can't take a long rest, which essentially means that unable to take a long rest, you would probably die of exhaustion. Like, Rudy can't even feed herself, basically. That's why I'm here. But she's being taken care of, and so she's not going to die. Um, there are other people that are being brought to the cathedral who are wounded and dying and they need a healing spell cast on them and to give a, a very very simple thing is 
High Flame Keeper, the spell to fix Rudy is a fifth level spell called Greater Restoration. Well, for, and Irma is being very, very um, uh, clear that basically um, for, for High Flame Keeper Irma, a, one of her fifth level spell slots, she could use that to cast Aura of Vitality, which would let her save the lives of like a dozen people. And so for her, she is looking at that as, as a very, uh, as for, for her, a life. Do you guys have another contact who is capable of divine magic? We were waiting for Ophelia Reed to show up. She's supposed to be joining our entourage at some point, but she hasn't, we don't know when or how. She's a very high ranking flame keeper. Mm. One of the acolytes who is with you says, Irma can help. She's only asking that you wait. If that's the case, then we need to help as many people as possible, but I am not leaving Rudy's side until she's better. And I, I grab a stool, put it up next to the bed, <laughs> and sit. <clears throat> The high flame keeper, the high flame keeper comes to you, she and and exhausted, she puts a hand on your shoulder, Wilhelm, and says, "Your friend has given much to serve you, so that you can serve people." And she hands you a bucket and a set of bandages, and says, "Instead of sitting down." Why don't you help the other people who need help too? Not everyone here needs magic to be helped. She'll be okay though. She'll be fine. I I, I stand up with the bucket and the bandages and I, I, I do pause for a moment and kind of like, just give Rudy a little hand through the hair and I'm like, I'm not going anywhere. Until you're better. <laughs> you mean too much to me. I'm gonna go start helping people. I'll go along with Wilhelm and teach him how to put on a bandage. I have good medicine. <laughs> Understand. Do this. I have the U wand of healing? Is that yeah, better? Yeah. Or... Oh, that's Wrath. Yeah. Yeah, Wrath has the wand. Yeah. So we all, I imagine. It casts cure wounds with seven charges. Yeah. Oh. But then there's also this thing, and I pick up Rudy's axe. Doesn't that do the opposite of healing? <laughs> it's actually a magic axe, and it has healing uh, magic in healing it. magic in it. But you don't have to hit people with the axe to heal them, right? I don't know how. No, Rudy that's does the it, opposite. So we can effect. try. <laughs> <laughs> Here, <laughs> heal my hand. <laughs> no, no. Um, I imagine that all of us mm -hmm. spend. I, at least I, I'll speak for myself. No, you get the bucket and I take the... <laughs> yeah. I will spend, like literally, I'm not leaving this room. I will go around the room and help those in need, but I'm always like, I walk by Rudy's bed in between each time and just like give her a glance to make sure that she's mm -hmm. there and breathing. Bruce is laying yeah. on her chest as it goes up and down. I don't know if that's a good thing. I'm scared. <laughs> You love it. The thrall. <laughs> but I'll, I'll help. Still being fed the, you love fed the Bruce info in my head. Yeah, I'll purge as much contamination as I can, and then I'll use prestidigitation to like clean, like. Oh, to keep people clean. To keep everything clean, and. I'm gonna use mending yeah. to fix like broken items, like bed, mm. uh, tables, uh, doors, uh, any foundational stuff, and then the cure runes. I'm gonna blow through yeah. the charges and help anyone that comes in. Several days pass, for there are dozens and dozens, perhaps hundreds of wounded and injured in Totsfeld that need to be tended to. But for many, the, the knowledge that their future king humbled himself to help in the cathedral is an inspiring sight. And it is a few days later when many people begin instead of 
when the tide turns, and instead of more wounded coming to the cathedral, those who are rescued begin leaving, that Irma casts the spell of greater restoration and restores Rudy's mind. I give you the biggest hug. What What is it like, like in terms of my intelligence coming back? You are, you awaken feeling exhausted and with no memory of what happened since that moment. It's like you've been in a coma since that moment. Brains, brains, there are brains. Brains are at. It's okay. Where are the brains? Where's the? You're, you're safe, Rudy. Did we, did we, we win? We won. we won. We won. I just lay back down. <laughs> I can't believe it. I, I was, I was sure we, I had no idea if we were getting out of there alive. It was a near thing, but we're so glad that you're back. Thank you all for doing, I assume what you needed to do to get us out of there and did, how about the rest of the people? Did we? Did we save everyone else? Mm -hmm. As many as we could, yes. Only a few were lost. But we got most of the staff out of the mines, and we've been... You've been out for a few days. We've been helping the people of Toddsfeld in that time. Does anyone else need more help? I know, I just... I'm recuperating myself, but I can... I can help. Irma places her hand on your shoulder and says... Um... She says... Spoken like a true mother. You, you're, you should be no worse for the wear. If you'd like to get up and start helping, she offers you a bucket. <laughs> That's advantages. <laughs> well, I mean, I, if anyone needs healing, I can do at least two aura vitalities. She says, we'll need much more than that. There's a lot to be done. All right, uh, let, let, me, let me help where I can as much as I can. While I'm sure that the people of Tadsfeld uh, can't speak for them, but only for me, I appreciate um, that you all have taken, even though I know you were waiting for, for Rudy, I appreciate that you've all taken your time and your energy to help the people here. I think it will go a very long way in making them feel, um, feel more hopeful and put trust in you during this difficult transition time. Thank you. Irma says, the miracles of the flame allow for many great things, but the process of healing is ultimately a slow one, one that takes time and patience and hard work. Winning the battle is one thing, but my time and my life has been spent cleaning up after more than a few of them. And I think it, I hope it does your spirit good, Your Majesty, to learn what it means to clean up a mess instead of just stop one from being made any worse. I think anything that me and my people can do to aid the people of Westmar, we're going to do our best. Well, thank you. May you and your friends walk in the light and the flame be with you. And also with you. And with that, Rudy restored. Yay. My mind is back. I, I do like, I, I'm kind of like a little more clingy than usual with you for, for like the next 24 to 48 hours. And I'm just like, I constantly am telling you how wonderful you are <laughs> and how much I appreciate you. Yeah. 19 temporary hit points. <laughs> <laughs> I am the best. <laughs> um, and I keep having just these reoccurring flashes of like Bruce mm -hmm. and like mm -hmm. somehow feel slightly more positive towards him. I yeah, he is. He, he looks favorably upon, upon you and I know you reciprocate. I know he had something to do with this. I just can't put my finger. How long does the fall thing last? Forever. Cool, cool. Until it is removed. Do I know? 
You just really like Bruce. Hmm. Not so the, more specifically, the charm condition means Rudy can't attack me, which is great. Which is coming in handy, actually. Oh, oh, man, that actually... oh if somebody tries to puppet you. <laughs> and um, yeah. I have advantage on social interaction with Rudy, but then also we can telepathically speak anywhere on this plane of existence. It is worth noting that he can only have one thrall at a time. Who was your last thrall? Kippers? Uh, yeah. Oh! <laughs> the, the... Somewhere the cobalt. in a cave under a tree, a little cobalt is like, <gasps> <Whoa. laughs> And he just starts running. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Smash cut to Kippers, yeah. Although actually that was yesterday because you cast it on my dad. Oh yeah, I did. Oh, yeah, I did. Oh. Kippers was already. Yeah, he got freed. <laughs> yeah. He's had a whole. He's dead already. Oh. <laughs> In the forest. <laughs> he might have made it out. I Maybe hope. one day he'll be a real dragon. Yeah. So, with uh, with all that accomplished, um, and Toddsfeld on the road to rebuilding. What is you, what is next for each of you? During during the next few days, while we help out around Toddsfeld, there's like a ceremony where I I take a single brick and there's like people painting uh, portraits of me as I place the brick <laughs> upon the the broken dam of Toddsfeld and I pose for two hours with the brick. Um, just we, to we, signify. We go in sometimes and we like get. Fix your hair. Press the digitates of some. Give you something to eat. Yeah, yeah. but I, I place the ceremonial first brick on the dam of Toddsfeld. Um, I also have like some long conversations with Heidi. I imagine just, you know, thanking her and kind of explaining everything that happened and and kind of a conversation with both you and your sister about, you know, how things how things are going and how I'm hoping they can progress. Yeah, I think we should like, we would write letters to all of our siblings, like informing them about what's going on and seeing if anybody wants to like, I don't know, have a stronger relationship with Castle yeah. Sodden now that it's mm -hmm. no longer. Also, despite, despite the amount of animosity, Wilhelm does put forward the idea of gathering the children and having a funeral for uh, Duke von Fritz. Yeah. Um, then I believe in time, um, as you spend this time, the other arrival who er arrives is the high flame keeper, Ophelia Reed of the Silver Order. Uh, Ophelia Reed uh, is, is a, is a warm-faced woman from Illyria and is a prominent high flame keeper of, of the faith and a representative of the silver order, but also of the divine matriarch who is the head of the religion of the sacred flame. And Ophelia Reed arriving in Castle Sodden, which I would assume has now become your makeshift base of operations as it is repaired. She reports warmly, we'll all be I'm very impressed with how things have gone. And it seems to me like you took that time that you were granted and managed to uh, to make your way forward of getting all these dukes together. I think Westmar is all the better for it. We, we are working as hard as we can to unite our nation. Hmm. And hopefully, the Illyrians still stand with us when the time comes. And she replies, indeed. When you're ready, we're gonna, we're gonna be ready to help you with what you're gonna need to do back in Drakenheim. Good. We're going to need all the help we can get. The, the good news is that now under the banners of the Von Kessel name, we have several different forces of troops, all very capable. We have more armies on the way, and we're going to be able to rebuild a lot of this place. Excellent. 
Rudy, over the, the these past few days, since you've come to, how do you and the, the regulars spend your time? Um, I think we've, I actually want to have a talk with each of the regulars separately, where um, we talk about our role in this, and I guess Rudy's goal is to speak to them about staying and potentially lending a hand in the rebuilding of Tottsville. I imagine that there's one night where you're able to assemble, speak with many of them individually, but it comes forward that assembling the regiment in the Great Hall to discuss this mm -hmm. is, is an important thing. And so green thumbs and yellow jacket and I, I, I imagine that, that, that Blue Streak probably is retired. Yeah. Oh yeah, I don't know. I mean, yeah. she was present at the beginning of this a few days ago. Yeah. But yeah, I don't think she's like, yeah, let's keep fighting. I, I think that some of the Irregulars and some of the Steel Fangs have just decided with this that their fighting days are behind them. Mm -hmm. But many others express their f that um, I think there is a, there's a sense from, from Green Thumbs, he says, you know, we got ordered to do a lot of dirty things during the Civil War. Mm. It feels good to have to do the right thing for once. Mm. And Green Th and many of them say, I don't want our fighting days behind us, but I want us to be fighting for what's right instead. And they they kind of all say, this one, he's more of a, a, more, more than what his father was. He's got to do what's got to be done, but things are getting bad. He might need us. I mean, if you're willing to fight for what's right, that's great, but we... I think we have, personally at least, I think we have things to make up for, and that's what I'm trying to do by stand by his side. And I think just this place is one of the those things. We we may have been ordered to do things, but we still made the decision to do them. One of the other regulars says, so you want us to all put down roots here, rebuild for a dam that we knocked over while you go gallivanting around having great adventures with the king, eh? <sighs> Ugh, adventures for sure, but I'll be honest, if what I just experienced is anything like what I've been experiencing, I'm putting myself at risk in order to make this country, this land, better so that way we never have to be put in the place to do something like this again. Another one of the the regulars, Violet Tendency, says, you know, Big Red, maybe, uh, maybe you ought to give that retirement thing a second thought. You got a bunch of kids back at home. You got grandkids. Don't you think that this was a little bit of too close of a call this time? I think every Close call is too close, and they're the reason I keep doing what I'm doing. They're the reason I'm out here trying to change things, trying to make up for what we did, for what I did, what I chose to do. And if I have to give the rest of my life to do that, I think I will make that choice. And as much as I'd love to go home and see my kids and grandkids and grow up, if I stop, and something happens to this world, and I could have done something about it, I will never be able to live with that. So what do you want us to do, boss? I mean, there's so much that can be done in Toddsfeld to help rebuild this place, and they're gonna need some helping hands, some willing people to help them with it. Um, Purple Pro says, I think they need some someone who's strong with an axe to go chop down some trees so that they can actually build some scaffolding to rebuild that dam. <laughs> so maybe you better just stick around here and help us out. Maybe I'll help for the next little while while we're here, but you know what? I think I, I put my faith that all you all are able to do what you can to help out. Well, it's not like the new Duchess here has got any anything even resembling an army, so at least we might see a little bit of action. 
I mean, there's always going to be use for a, a soldier. Now, that doesn't mean I'm not going to come back and see y'all. At least now I, I know where y'all are at and we can maybe have a drink at the pub sometime. A few of the other regulars ponder on that and Violet Tendencies says, I just think when time comes for you to have that big party over in Drakenheim, whatever that's going to be, we don't want to miss out on that. That seems like my idea of retirement. Mm. I'll make sure your name is top of the guest list. Is there anything else you'd like to say to the irregulars? Mm. Um, I think we just have at least one more night to talk about our old stories and shenanigans that we used to get into. I, I imagine that most of the irregulars want to hear basically everything that you've been up, been up to, and mm. many are incredulous that you even could. And I think the prevailing joke amongst them is that that jokes on you that you even considered retirement, like the like local sheriff. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> I was fooling myself. Let's be honest. I, I I've always had a taste mm. for adventure, but again, with that cause of moving forward and helping people out and keeping the world safe. And I'm able to do that now. And who knows what retirement may look like in the future. Green Thumbs asks, but that king made you a baroness. So does that mean that we're going legit? Like we're not merc mercs anymore? Are we like a royal regiment? Is that the deal? Like what's, what are we now? Do we just, are we still fighting for the highest bidder? Or, or are we, are we just signing up Signing on with this for for the foreseeable future. I mean, I think each of y'all have to make the choice, but I think it's worth rather than doing the highest bidder, but maybe the highest cause at this point. So I'd say that's what I'm seeing here. Violet tendencies. Does that mean we have to take a pay cut? I mean, am I getting paid to, <laughs> to do this? <laughs> Unlimited funding. <laughs> yeah, we have a. I wrote in my notes unlimited funding. So yeah, yeah everybody's gonna. Listen, I have an in with the Duke in Toddsfeld, so uh, I'll make sure you get a good, uh, good wage coming your way. They can have a good wage coming their way, right? Oh, we'll discuss it. We'll look at the ledger. <laughs> <laughs> Steady employment. And uh, we have a huge debt to the Amethyst Academy, so... <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that debt still has to be paid. Like, they, like the, even though all that all that gear is destroyed, uh, uh, yeah, that that's... I take, like, an adjunct gig, like, teaching, <laughs> like, Arcana 101. <laughs> Trying to pay it down. What is Wrath up to in the midst of, of all this? Oh, Wrath? Um... He continues to commune with Bruce, plotting. Bruce says, much is now buried beneath that mine. I'm sorry you did not get to taste the brain. You will be. I will, I will be, I, I apologize. But you know that it is not over. I know. The fish still swims. And you know how much I like fish. <laughs> it, is, it is a delectable treat. I hunger for that creature. And as you sink your teeth into its scaly flesh, we will devour its power, its body, and its mind. The cat purrs. <laughs> <laughs> and we too will um, influence the region. Very good. And then I'm also going to feed him bits of... We've got some... Uh, we have some provisions. Oh, uh, there's the Hydra still. There's there's a bunch of other contaminants. Yeah, we, we go we go collect some monster bits. Yeah. Bruce has a very like specific mm. appetite. Yeah. So, yeah, he we we have to uh make sure Bruce says 
there was another that fled the forest with Everett Freed. Oh, yes. Do you recall? Yes, she... The alienist, Sina. They were seen together. We saw them. They traveled together here. And then we have not seen her since. Do you she, know where we might find her? She understands much of the space between worlds. She may have also intended to help our enemy. Maybe instead of devouring her, we control her. Hmm. The cat purse. <laughs> will you help me, Bruce? You will help me. I understand. <laughs> we have a great relationship. They know, I mean, it sounds like every cat, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, um, as things wrap up in the city of Toddsfeld, the rebuilding continues. The last stop on your trip will be to pay a proper visit to the Duke of Dransmond. And so plans begin to be drawn up for that trip. However, I know this is your last time with us, Ava, but our whole crew, I think it is befitting that you level up to level 17. Oh! oh. oh. How exciting. Woo. If you miss with an attack roll, you can roll it again with advantage. You use this feature at once per short or long rest. Mm -hmm. Or should I just take a fighter level? Fighter's fun. I would, if you wish, um, if you would like to trade some, le like if you would like to retrain and grab a couple fighter levels, I would allow that. Yeah, but the last one was my, my feet. So that's a tough trade. What's, what's the feat? Um, it took Prodigy, which mm -hmm. gave me that. Oh yeah, you, you really... I'm the skill master. Yeah, you, you don't roll mm -hmm. low. You don't roll low no more. I mean, if you... I would offer that as, as times have changed for Wilhelm, mm -hmm. I would extend to you the following offer if you wanted to. Um, also, given the wisdom of the elven warriors of old. If you would like, I offer you this trade. You can trade back um, up to five fighter levels if you want to. So, and if you want, um, yeah, if you, if you want to trade the trade, essentially instead of being a 12 rogue, it's, Five fighter. It's so tough because, like, I actually have used so many of the things that I've gotten at, like, my last four levels, my last five levels, Elegant Maneuver, which I'm not getting rid of, or no, sorry, Elegant Maneuver is garbage, mm -hmm. um, but Blind Sense has come in real handy, Slippery Mind, which is advantage, uh, proficiency and wisdom saving throws, a feat, and now Master Duelist. I don't... Well, I mean, the fighter levels would give you action surge, a feat, um, a fighting style, and uh, extra attack. Let you. me ponder on this. Okay. It sounds appealing, and I just need to decide if blind sense... Yeah. It's five levels. Now, Ginny, if you were leveling your character up... yeah. Matter, but... The only thing I have to let you know is that in the world of Drakenheim, you can't take Wish as a spell. You have to unlock it. See, I had it pulled up on my Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You got to unlock it first. It's it, uh, um. That's fine. I'll just take Power Word Kill. <laughs> oh! <laughs> no, no. I have to take something useful for my current position. So what What are what are Jitty's ninth level spells for Wizards picks? I w feel with like, Wish off the table. I feel like I would probably take like like invulnerability or like time stop i think it would make sense to take like defensive types of spells 
in my current. Nice. Invulnerability is a crazy spell. <laughs> you are immune to all damage for 10 minutes. And it's concentration, but you're immune to damage, so like... And it's a ninth level spell, so it charges your Arcane Ward. Because <laughs> it's an Abjuration. Yeah, it adds yeah. 18 points to my yeah. Arcane Ward. Yeah. Prismatic Wall. Oh, yes. yeah, Prismatic Wall is another Abjuration. Prismatic Wall. Yeah, that's something else. Ooh. I ran into someone like that once. Ouch. Yep. <laughs> Ouchie, ouch. Ouchie, ouch. <laughs> uh, what, what's Rudy going to take? So Rudy just automatically gets pieces from a uh, fighter, which is an extra... Oh, what is it? Sorry. Um, she gets, sorry, um, an extra indomitable and an extra use of action surge. And oh. my proficiency bonus goes up. So oh, yeah. surge, double, double, double action, action surge. surge. Triple indomitable. More proficiency in oh all things. Yes, and you can use action surge twice, but only once on the same turn. So you can't action surge can't and action surge action again. Surge, yeah. That would be crazy if you could. That would be but nine attacks yeah. in one turn. Ooh. <laughs> yep. What about Wrath? Wrath also unlocks ninth level spells. And what did, how did we feel about Power Word Kill? It was pretty cool. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Seems doesn't doesn't befit that of wrath. Um, there were, I had some ideas. Some of the options are astral projection, mm -hmm. blade of disaster, foresight, which is kind of cool. Um, for a minute, after a minute, for the next eight hours, I can bestow the ability to see the immediate future. The target can't be surprised, has advantage on all attack rolls, ability checks, and saving throws, and everybody else has disadvantage on attack rolls. Because yeah, it's like, Ooh. yeah. That's pretty cool. Yep. Bruce, uh, the other one is imprisonment. <laughs> I mean, they're all good. Astral projection, blade of disaster, foresight, imprisonment. Do we get one? Psychic scream and true polymorph, though. It's like true polymorph, yeah, is actually pretty cool. I just have to remember to cancel it at 59 minutes and minutes. 45 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> or else, like, being used, like, permanent? Forever. <gasps> oh, my. Okay. But I also yeah. could be good against bad people. Yeah, because you can, if you turn a creature into an object and concentrate it on them for one hour, like, you can literally turn someone into a potted plant, and then they're permanently a potted plant. And then we can smash a potted plant. Oh, then they would turn back. But you could just have, Wait, like... really? Do they die? Um, when you turn a creature into an object, oh, an object. Um, it, it if it's reduced, um, if the creature is dropped to zero hit points or dies, so the pot, if you smash the pot, the pot has zero hit points, the pot turns back into whatever it was before. But then I can just put it on my mantle. You can turn an object into a creature and it's your friend. Yes. Forever. Yes. Oh, yeah. except once the spell becomes permanent, you can't control them anymore. So it might be friendly, or if you're mean to it, it might not. Yeah, but you could just go around turning objects into cats. Or you could make a creature grenade. That'd be cool. <laughs> a oh, creature like, grenade? Turn something into like a small glass orb, and then you just throw the glass orb at people. And then it becomes <laughs> the creature again. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. It's fun. Like any any huge creature, if you just turn it into a small glass, or, like, yeah. Keep it in your bag of holding? Yeah. Yeah! <laughs> and you don't label them, so you have no idea. You're just like, I throw this yeah, one. I know it's big. That's like a super bag of tricks. Yeah. The super bag of tricks. Yeah. Um, I believe um, uh, Wrath will meditate on his decision. Okay. Sounds like a couple decisions still need to be ma made then. But some really cool uh, yeah. options. So... As we wrap up, it seems like what are the final things that Wilhelm, Rudy, Wrath, and Ava would like to do with their time together before the before the king moves on to Dransmond? Ava, we'd like to have you for dinner. That sounds wonderful. I have many things I would like to discuss about the Crown's support for the region in the aftermath of this event and uh, about the uh, line of succession and uh, what you meant socially. I just thought, you know, we got together and then just went off murdering bad guys. I thought maybe we could just share a few pints, the group of us, and, you know, be friends. 
certainly we can socialize. Yes, that might be pleasant. Great. It, it will be. You seem sure. Yes. Okay. That's your confidence is a little unsettling, <laughs> but sure. We are lovely. Well, I certainly like you more now than I did at the beginning, I will say. And we like you more than we did at the beginning. Thank you for saving our lives multiple times. Mm, multiple welcome. times. Yes, I think in the balance of things, uh, generally, uh, that is something that, that creates positive feeling, I've found. We owe you a lot, and we hope that you... You will be staying here, right? You're... Yes, I need to assist Heidi. She is young and malleable, unfortunately. Well, then, no better person to... Malleator. Malleator than, <laughs> than you. So. Uh, you've proven yourself a, a great asset and a very uh, surprisingly kind person behind the calculations. Hmm. Hmm. I think one thing that we all know is that family is the most important. And yes, as much as you came in seeming calculating and, and straightforward, I think there is kindness in you. There's love and you show that for your family. And that's something that we can respect above all. And thank you for showing us that and kindness and what I can hope is forgiveness for the things that maybe myself and our ancestors or family have done in the past. Thank you. Uh, I believe that kindness can be a part of a calculation, and perhaps now that variable holds a bit more weight for me than I originally thought. I appreciate the effort that you all have gone to to make positive change here. What you and your crew did to the dam, while destructive, uh, what you have done now is the opposite of that. So, on the sides of the equation, I think uh, we're reaching reaching balance. I walk up and I give you a mama bear hug. I say, you're one of the family now. Oh. Wilhelm. <laughs> oh, oh, I come in. You know this is how we do it in the Whitaker household, Rath. Okay. Uh. <laughs> we all gather around Ava and give her this large group hug that she seems entirely uncomfortable with. Mm. These aren't so bad. Hugs. Yeah, you get used to them after after a while. I'll keep working on it. And all you feel is this like warm, like pressed digitation, like on your back. I've just got to rubbing it. <laughs> it's so soothing. Mm. <laughs> Eva, I want you to know that although you will be staying here, you will always be an ally to the three of us. Beyond just me as a king, I'm also just a person who's trying to do what they think is right. And you'll always have a place by our side if you ever want to join. And I, in any trips I take through Todd's Fells, I'll make sure to stop and see how you're doing. Thank you. I uh, also hope you'll consider, I've been drafting some revisions to your rules. Uh, I've been making <laughs> notes as you read them, but it would be especially helpful for me to finalize this process if I could have perhaps an hour with the written rules to make sure my document is complete and accurate. Mm -hmm. um, we can look over it together. That's acceptable. Okay. When do you have two to four hours? I, I suppose now? We right. can do it over dinner. I'll, I'll make a home cooked meal. I haven't done that in a while. And but but you can submit your revisions not directly into the book. I'll I'll, I'll take certainly. I would never alter the original text. It's. I agree that maybe with the battles that we've seen and the things that we've had to face, that although my father meant well with the rules, um, changes might. Be okay. Uh, 
But the original text is the only thing I have remaining from my father, so I'd like to cherish it. Well, we can certainly preserve history without uh, continuing to repeat it. Yes, I agree. Wonderful. Uh, I pull out like a, a like a red ink and quill. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have revisions in mind to some of these r- rules? <laughs> I feel like I would need to. I, I would need to see the complete list. I do think several of these several of these rules are, uh, contradict one another, which I think um, they, sh- they could certainly be condensed. What is the total number? There's 100 rules. It's too, it's too many rules. Uh, I think that if those rules contradict each other, and, and uh, I'm sure that some of them cover similar ground, there has to be a more efficient way. There are literally two rules in here about stealing from dead people. It's, it's extremely confusing. What are they? Hold on. <laughs> uh, 63, gold has no value to the dead. Wait, 65? 65, the dead have no need of trinkets. Why Why are there two rules about the same thing? It's just steal Sounds their gold like and steal their stuff. Your father was trying to justify thieving from the dead. I think both of those rules could arguably be eliminated, especially since I'm certain you have at least one other rule that speaks of the allocation of resources. We've done that before, based on that rule. Yeah, I think so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rath, stop blindly following Wilhelm's rules! You're right. I uh, must think for myself for once. I'm, <laughs> Bruce, what should I do? <laughs> I, I don't know. Sometimes the only way to... No, no. If you believe very strongly in something, stand up and fight for it. No, that, that I don't is... think that's related. Listen, let's, for, let's start by categorizing each rule into a subheading. Oh, Lord. <laughs> okay. This you're, willing, you're willing to do the work? This dinner just became homework. <laughs> yeah, this, this is gross. Yes, I thought we were socializing. This is I gr- thought this was for entertainment. Do you have a preferred meal flavor of sorts that you like? Uh, I prefer the type with um, a balanced nutrition. I will I'll do my best. I put meat and potatoes in front. That is, that is balance, yeah? yeah? Yes. You need vegetables. Uh, vegetables. Some greenery would not go amiss, but I appreciate... Can I turn the potatoes green with my digitation? <laughs> Does that work? <laughs> um, green potatoes. <laughs> sure. Potatoes come out of the ground. A... Yeah, they're a vegetable. Yeah, it's still a carbohydrate. That's <laughs> <laughs> fine. And we all laugh and drink. Yeah, no, I um, I. Around. I Where grab, are we? I grab the potted. Plant. I imagine that you would be taking this meal in the great hall because, yeah. as befits the the not the local pub house. Um, many of the local pubs were destroyed in the bombardment. Oh, that's a sh- we're sitting in the root now. We're sitting in the in the yeah. great hall. Wine, ale, shots. <laughs> well. You're, it is a more efficient delivery method. What are we pulling out of the cellars of uh, the castle? I'm sure we have some um, of your father's collection that we can crack Oh, yeah. Open. We could raid uh, some. They have to be purged of contamination first. But I can certainly, do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's my skill set. Indeed. Indeed. Um, well. I was going to say, finally, I think we should do a, a, a toast to all the soldiers who fell in the battle. I mean... We wouldn't have got here without all the support of, and I kind of raise a glass to like the different people. To those who didn't make it from all of our groups. Cheers. Cheers. And no need for trinkets. To Westamar. To Westamar. Westamar. To Westamar. The toast complete. You spend the next several days finishing up any other errands or affairs that you need to settle to ensure that Heidi and the rest of the surviving Von Fritz family are properly in place to at least transition their power from what was being done under their father's rule. There's a lot of work ahead. Many of the castle staff will be needing to be replaced, not the least of which because they were transformed into monsters. Um, But... uh, but with the support of the many of the Octonwald regulars to bolster the, the the forces and rebuild, 
it can be perhaps given some time, Toddsfield will once again be the beating heart of industry uh, and a, a powerful city that it once once was. Now the Hooded Lanterns and the Steel Fangs begin to gather to lead the King's train to its final uh, final stop on this grand tour of Westamar, that of Dransmond. With envoys already emerging from um, the from Valentin, the Duke Valentin von Baden, securing the king's invitation to Dransmond. Those affairs are being drawn up for about a week-long trip from Toddsfeld to, to Dransmond. And finally the day arrives that you are to set out and bid farewell to Ava and Heidi in, in Toddsfeld. As the train of soldiers begins to leave Castle Sudden, you stand on the drawbridge that the chains actually still haven't been fixed. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. Sorry. <laughs> uh, um, and Heidi and Ava stand just under the, the gates by the portcullis, and the three of you on the bridge, on the other side of the bridge. What do you say to one another? Goodbye, Ava. Thank you for your assistance in saving the king, saving Rudy and myself. Um, Bruce will miss you. It is always good to find others that uh, channel the great energies, the cosmic energy. And uh, if you're ever looking for someone to pledge undying allegiance to, um, he is always open to new uh, followers. Thank you. I will add that to the pros and cons list. It's important. Thank you for all of your help. I wish you the best of luck on your further journey into kingdom. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Rudy, I have come to understand over the last few days that um, what the word family means to people means different things. Uh, I can tell you that a few days ago, if you had told me I was part of your family, I don't know if I would have taken that in a positive way. But seeing what that means to you makes me grateful to hear it. You're forever welcome in the family where we've created through all of this. And know that I owe you and your city a great debt. And feel free, if you ever need anything, to call upon me if you need it. Ava, to an everlasting friendship. Well, you have mortal life spans. To a, to a, to a <laughs> long-lasting friendship. Yes, as long as is feasible. Yes. Great. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> well, see ya. <laughs> And with that, the Dusk Wardens leave Castle Sodden in the hands of Heidi, Von Fritz, and Ava Blightward. And that is where Ooh. this arc ends, and our episode for this evening ends as well. Thank you so much, Jill, Joe, and Kelly, but an amazing thank you Yay. to Ginny for playing with us. For six episodes, six weeks for those watching along, it's been a wild ride having you play play with us, and I can't wait for the next time. It has been such a joy. You are so wonderful to play with. It's been amazing to get to play in the world of Drakenheim, and I hope that I get to do it again. I very much hope hope so too. You fit in with the group so well, and you were you were the missing fourth member of this team, and you brought you brought so much mm -hmm. to the table. Aww. And so, Ava, more than the character, like, you will be missed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, having a competent wizard is just, like, <laughs> so important to a team dynamic. <laughs>
Well, I'm glad I was able to pretend to be a competent wizard for a few sessions. <laughs> <laughs> I also want to give a huge thank you to Kyle for all of his work behind the scenes. Yeah. Thank you, Kyle. Our other competent wizard. Our other competent yeah. wizard. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it, it, uh, um, it's, it actually has been really cool having uh, competent wizards uh, join as a fourth player in, in our team over the past several weeks. It really creates the juxtaposition when you have two people play competent wizards versus Wrath and Sebastian, who now <laughs> seem like absolute wild cards in the past. <laughs> we are wizards. Well, so. we're not wizards, we're a warlock. So yeah, you get the warlock and the sorcerer, and then what two actual wizards are like when they... When yeah. They, yeah. Uh, and also a huge thank you to Monty Martin, our dungeon master, for running Woo! this whole arc. Incredible arc. Yeah, so amazing. good. Thank you, thank you. It was a lot of uh, food for thought in this one. Yeah, a lot of brain food. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, feed the mind. In, indeed, in, indeed. Well, this entire experiment was made possible because we have an incredible Patreon community that supports our work. Without our patrons, we would not have been able to get the studio space. We would not have been able to set up the extra camera and microphones and lights and backdrops that were needed to make this collaboration possible. We wouldn't have been able to put Ginny up here in Toronto for several days to to play games with us or, 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 or make sure that uh, everyone in our crew from Jill and Joe and Kyle and everyone make sure that they're taken care of for the time and effort and amazing contributions that they make to this work as well. Our, if it isn't clear, our Patreons are the lifeblood of our actual play projects. And a big thank you from myself and the whole team to all of our patrons. Uh, we hope that you really enjoyed this one because this one, we, we know that, the, we really hope that you really liked it because uh, we really put a lot in, 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 into this, this collaboration. So thanks for making it possible. If you want to help make things like this possible, you can become a patron Ooh. by following the links down in the description below. And if you do become a patron, you'll gain access to our exclusive patron-only Discord community, which is a wonderful place where we all hang out and chat about all of the Drakenheim stuff, all of the other games that we play, as well as just any D&D tips. All sorts of cool stuff happens in there, including people finding their own little game groups and playing games out of our Discord. And you also get access to our writer's rooms and our Q&As. Uh, so all of that and more in our Discord, which is exclusive for our patrons. In our games, we get to use a variety of incredible assets produced by talented artists. They have graciously given us permission to use them in our tabletop games, and we encourage you to go out and support some of these amazing creators. Uh, Dwarven Forge, Hero Forge, WizKids, um, player character artwork by Elizabeth Perot, and music by Tabletop Audio. Of course, don't forget to look at the links below for our Teespring store where you can find all of your favorite Dungeon Dudes shirts, including Dusk Wardens, yes, 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 and many more. Check out bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch. You can also find all of our regular videos over on YouTube where we're posting shorts almost every week weekday and new regular videos on Tuesdays and Thursdays and well as well. Hit us up at youtube.com slash Dungeon Dudes. Ginny, where can our audience find your amazing content? They can find it at youtube.com slash Ginny D. I make videos also. You can also join us on Tuesday evenings, but we will be taking a few weeks off after the airing of this episode uh, just to, you know, see people around Christmas and all that. Um, but we will be back. We will announce the date, and uh, we don't know the date specifically yet, do we? Not yet. We don't know when we'll, we'll be taking the next couple couple weeks off, and we'll be back in late January of late January, twenty twenty four. We will return with more Drakenheim. You can check us out on Twitch from six pm to eight pm Eastern time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can also watch all of the Drakenheim episodes on YouTube, or check us out as an audio only podcast as well. We are also very excited to say that this spring we will be launching our third Kickstarter project, Monsters of Drakenheim, featuring our third book, Paluto Jackson's Compendium of Monster Slaying. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> If you would like to be notified when the campaign goes live, there will be links down below. Kelly and I have been writing hundreds of new monsters for Dungeons & Dragons, including new epic bosses, elemental conditions, 
and a little bit of a you know, hack job of a crafting system. So if all of that sounds really cool to you, if more monsters for your Drakenheim campaign sounds really neat, follow the links below to be notified when that Kickstarter goes live. It's coming early this spring. I'm so excited about this epic boss thing. Yeah. <laughs> With that, thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time in Drakenheim.